Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So the viewers, you actually it was Ivan, but the viewers have asked us to do a video comparing facebook.com slash cockpit360. Now this is really cool. This is basically 360 pictures where you can look around the cockpit of real aircraft. These come from museums and enthusiasts and stuff like that. It's amazing that people have donated these uh, three-dimensional pictures. And then compare them to the DCS cockpits and see how different they are, how realistic they are, how the textures look compared to the real plane and so on. Now, just due to a limit in my personal hardware, for instance, I've only got one monitor, I've only got one screen. Hashtag anyone's allowed to donate one to me if they want, but I just can't do this. I can't show this on one screen and I can't show DCS on another screen. And so we thought, no, we can't do this. But then we thought, okay, well, let's just show off Cockpit360 on Facebook. Uh, kudos to whoever runs this or the guys that run at, run this. It's all very good. I'll link this, but it's very simple. Just go to facebook.com, Cockpit360, and it's here. Then go to photos. So photos, everyone. And then down here are all of the aircraft that they've covered so far. So these come presumably from various museums around the world. And so you just click on them and you're transported into the cockpit. So, guys, let's pick the first one, which has to be the most exciting of all of them. Let's click on the SR-71. It's about five tiers down. Give it a second to load. I'm just going to see if I can get full screen mode. And I can. How cool. And I wonder if I can get rid of this. I uh, can't obviously get rid of that. No, you can't get rid of the comment section. That stays there. Copy. So this is an SR-71 cockpit. The resolution for me is not that good so if you zoom in on something it kind of goes a bit blurry but you know you can still just about see everything so i guess in a few years time they'll redo it with a super super high tech 3d camera but so let's have a look at this then i mean the first and most obvious thing is that whopping great triangle bow at the front and that awful visibility and in fact it's got a central kind of strut down the middle why the hell was that there how did they make visibility so bad to look forward you've literally got to kind of look have your head on the dash and either to the left or to the right hideous it must be something to do with the fact that they just didn't have the tech at the time to make Doing the canopy 3000 miles an hour and you have to have that there yeah i can imagine visibility in this thing is not exactly yeah. the most important simply due to the fact that it wasn't designed for anything except for flying high and reconnaissance and we look at the Del we look at the um, I mean this is slightly earlier than this we look at things like the the first um, Smack Two Deltas in the U.S. Air Force they had the same does anyone remember that I've forgotten the name the Delta Dagger yeah the Delta Dagger and whatnot uh, the they had Delta the same Dart. thing it, was, it must yeah. have been limit of tech at the time um, that you had to have this design of canopy but okay so let's just have a look around so we've got a ADI there main ADI with with nav on it we've got what looks like a backup ADI at the top which is kind of okay fine got an angle of attack indicator so I, there yes yeah, so JD I, I spoke to a pilot for the SR-71 and he really? said he would wrap his sandwich in tin foil and put it up against that windshield in the front yeah. and he would cook his lunch <laughs> so that's one of the reasons that they have a canopy that's like that it's incredibly air conditioned in there because the very, uh, skin was titanium because it would get up to about a thousand no degrees, it, it, so it, 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 it yeah, I don't think it, well, these coppers weren't pressurized, guys. Remember, they had no, to wear pressure were, suits. Oh no, this was when it got down to the ground. It would literally leak fuel like uh -huh. a sieve um, because of the pressurization difference. So I can imagine that's why that is there. Well, the, it leaks the, the, fuel the, because the panels opened up. Yeah, it leaks fuel because the panels opened up. So basically. Um, it's expansion. Like how a railway line expands, you have to have expansion gaps because all metal expands when it gets hot. So it expanded. I mean, the same things are on slower planes. Concorde expanded um, uh, several inches, and this thing expanded several inches. And you had to design. Um, I mean, this is famous for it, but all planes. Yeah, that was the first question I asked the pilot. Yeah. Was, why is this thing leaking all over the ground? I mean, this this <laughs> is extreme, obviously, because it went very fast and it had awkward alloys that to work with. But all planes expand, even a little F-16 or something. You chuck it in the air, it gets bigger and shorter because all metal expands um, during heat. But this had thumping great gaps, didn't it? Because of the yeah. difference in temperature that it had to... Um, um, I wonder, out of interest, we don't have any metallurgists here. Uh, I wonder if um, we've been looking at fatigue a bit with metal. I wonder if it, it uh, the re re the constant cycling of heat, of expansion and contraction. I wonder if that degraded the metal's qualities in terms as of strength. As far as I'm aware, apparently not. Simply due to the fact of um, how the metal was treated. It. I think it just got stronger. Well, you, you do because if it, 
because if you if you you know if you're making a sword, you quench it constantly, don't you? You heat it and, and cool it to actually make to to make it stronger. But anyway, um, I don't think any of us know the answer. But the angle of attack up to 15 degrees here on air refuel. Is this thing did this thing air to air refuel? Oh yeah, a lot. That's a funny funny switch to have there. Those two uh, lights either side. Do you think those? Um, uh, kind of, you could just pull them off and look around with them. Do you reckon they're like torches, or do you reckon that? Excuse me. Do you reckon that they're hard fixed where they are? Do you see what I'm talking about? Top left. Oh top yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, okay. So we've got. Oh look, we've got a F14 style speedo Mac meter there, and where well, I know. Yes, yes. That's so that went up to Mac 3.2, 3.3, or whatever. Interesting. It's got some points there. 140 knots. I wonder what that's pointing out there. And 460 knots. I wonder what that's pointing out there. That must be the back speed. Because at 90,000 feet, 460 knots, that is Mach 3 point something, isn't it? Interesting. Comp inlet. Anyone? Comp inlet on the left? Absolutely no idea. Compressor inlet. Inlet temperature. It was because the engines would get incredibly hot at the nose cone due to the airflow. Over. Really? Wow. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Drag chute. Pull to deploy. Um, our barometric altimeter standard clock. Okay, engine. Oh, what are these J fifty eight? I think um, engine RPMs. Um, so down below that are EGT engine gas temperature. Uh, what VSI on the left here. So all your usual flight instruments in the usual kind of place here. Speedo, ADI, uh, HSI, VSI. Uh, barometric altimeter and what is just left of the hsi we've got something to say equivalent airspeed knots altitude something and max so you've got, got like a backup speed over there for some reason with equivalent airspeed altitude something i don't know and max so i don't know what that's all about i don't know where you're looking right now it was just a, a digital readout sure. wasn't it yeah easier altitude. to read just left of the hsi yeah. hmm? it's altitude in feet Altitude and feet, yeah, Roger. It's just weird that you've got that there, but you've got all the flight instruments around it. Maybe it's like picking out. Maybe there's a procedure for IFR or whatever when you would just be looking at that or something. Maybe it, you know it makes your things easier to but read. There's also a lot of inlet stuff below that, so maybe Roger, maybe look, changing up. those inlet, the cone. Um, there's to adjust the cones for your speed. You might want to look at your speed right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, a normal, a normal. Analog HSI here. We've got uh, heading set, course set. So this is the fun thing you'll find in any modern plane. Um, we've got miles there. So um, that would mean probably TACAN. I can't think. It wouldn't be. There wasn't an INS system in this, was it? It was, it was, it was Star Navigator, wasn't it? It'd just be like DME or DME. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, there's basically TACAN, isn't it? DME, but just the military version of it course okay guys where do we want to go next let's just have a look at the engine on the right hand side so we've got below the engine gas temperatures i can't read that engine something zero to ten i don't know what that is i can't read it uh, why would this be below the engine gas temperatures so i don't know what that is fuel flow to each engine there we go fuel flow pounds per probably minute or hour i don't know can't read it. Oil PSI, I imagine, below that. Hydraulic pressure looks like the top hydraulic pressure is going to be right and left engine. Hydraulic pressure below that. Main systems? Just can't read it, unfortunately. Yeah, I can't read it either. Uh, what we've got here on the left uh, of that, I'm looking around here, we've got um, the what we want to show on our HSI. So we've got TACAN, we've got ADF. So yeah, so we've got TACAN, and that is going to give us um, that's going to set up our HSI. This is very similar to um, the A4 Skyhawk. If you remember that model in DCS, this reminds me very much. It must have been about that same period of time. Is that right? Does anyone know? Yep, that's right. Because everything I see here is immediately A4 Skyhawk. I can almost see some of these bits being taken out. I'm sure Brian Scholl said that was most of it was taken out of the F100 or something. Oh, Roger. Yeah, he's probably... uh, what's 100? Is that a Super Sabre? Yeah. Roger, again, roughly similar time, or I guess the Super Sabre was a little bit earlier, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a couple years earlier, I think. It was one of those, or one of the Delta Dagger, or something like that. Roger. I'm sure you said it's 
It's a shame we don't have any of those models yet, but I imagine we will do it at some point. Okay, guys. So, yeah, right. Sorry, I'm with it now. Display mode select. So this shows what your HSI is going to, which is this, which is your main, you know, this is pre-MFD and stuff. What this is going to show is it ANS, which we'll go over. INS, so it does have an INS system. Is it TACAN? Yeah, it does have an INS system. Roger, it's a TACAN or ADF. Yeah. So TACAN, we know TACAN. It's basically, if you like, uh, you know, it's just a, a, a military version of uh, VOR DME. Uh, ADF for radio, for homing in on an NDB or similar. ILS and ILS approach. So ILS will be used kind of 10 miles from the threshold, inwards roughly speaking. ILS approach would be used from up high down to that down to that kind of 10 miles to the, to, to the threshold. Now, the only thing I don't really understand there is ANS. Is that the Starlight system, I wonder, or something else? Anyone know ANS? Astro Navigation System. Yeah. Boom. He's got it. Astro Navigation System. And so we've got INS and ANS. Now, I'm going to hazard a guess, guys, at the reason why we don't have INS as the primary uh, in this plane is because INS doesn't like planes that stay up for a long time and go a long way. It gets decalibrated, as we all know. Uh, whereas ANS doesn't decalibrate, uh, so a plane that's going to fly for a long time, you know, and it did. It, once it, had, you know, once it had um, uh, aligned its INS, it would go up for pretty much 24 hours, wouldn't it? And refuel loads of times, fly around the world, come back, and then I wonder if that's the reason that, that it just got decalibrated with INS. I'd love to know that. Oh, I want to mess our 71 pilots now. Okay, so we've got the ability to choose TACAN there, normal there, AT, attitude, reference, select, ANS. So you've got um, something to switch down at the bottom there where we could mess, uh, possibly uh, define our ANS. That looks really interesting. Okay, guys, that was a lovely bit of history. I enjoyed that. Underneath the HSI, it's just like a big blank. No, it's a screen. I think that's a screen below the HSI. Yeah, it would be. I wonder, does anyone know... I wonder what that screen would be. I mean, we don't have any radar. Could it be what the camera is showing for the surveillance camera? Could it be absolutely no idea what that could be? I mean, it's an awkwardly placed, I can tell you that. It, 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 could, uh, it might could be. be the navigation. I'm not sure the, the ADF, was it, what's it called? The ANS? ANS Starlight. Yeah. Could it be, I don't know exactly. It's for the in-flight movie. I remember. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah, probably. <laughs> Okay, well, give me your theories, people at home. What, what this? If it is a screen, it might not even be. You know, it might be somewhere to put your notes or something. But let me know um, if anyone knows what that screen could be. It's thoroughly interesting. This is. I think it is a screen because if you look at the bottom left of it, there's an on and off switch. Yeah, I bet it is. It may be. It may be a repeater for what the RSO is. What's the RSO? Is it the guy in the, the back? Reconnaissance, reconnaissance. Yeah, that. Was, yeah, there's a the guy point. in the back. That's that, what I'm trying to see what what's in the back seat, but I can't get. To. That would make sense to me as well. Well, yeah, the SR-71s, oh, God. Uh, the AR-12 was the single-seater, question mark, and the SR-71 was two-seat. God, I'm so rusty. I have seen one yeah. of these at an air show, by the way, and it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. SR-71 was a two-seater aircraft. Right, okay, let's carry on from um, what we think is probably a screen and go left. Um, oh, right, just left of here, there's something... Um, kind of at the top right, if you like, a dial that says 0, 2, 3. Is it G, do you think? But it's G. Because you wouldn't put more than 3G in this. I'm going to go G. Okay, I got, yeah, it is acceleration. I got that. Send. It's a, it's, a, it's a moving map projection screen. Oh, oh, I was just about to say that's a moving map, yeah. Think how old tech that must have been to have a moving map in the f early 60s. How cool, right? Very I mean, cool. that's heavily advanced for your life. Mm. And then again, everything is advanced in this thing. Do you know what I mean? It's all... Um, okay, guys, I've just found the uh, G units and we've got recorder needles. Now, if I go left, I can't read it. Something bypass. FOD uh, bypass? For Something. Forward bypass? Forward bypass. What does... Yeah, uh, these are the bypasses for the engines, I believe. I mean, I know that these... The J58 had a uh, ramjet bypass. I wonder if it's something to do with ramjet bypass. Uh, which it would turn on at, I don't know, Mach 2.5, Mach 3, I, I I don't know. But interestingly, it reads backwards. As your see speed that? advances, your cones move forward and you use your bypasses for the the air. Yeah. So I'm sure these well, had something to do. I thought it was I mean, all automatic. The cones, but the cones are nothing to do with the bypass. Do the, the cones, yeah, it would have been. The cones would, but you need to monitor because these things break down. The cones are purely preconditioners. Um, so the only job of the cone... Uh, well, the main job of the cone is to turn the air from supersonic in relation to the engine um, from Mach 3 
it, to, to turn that right. to it sub Mac the one compression point or something. Yeah, it, it, it um, yeah. Uh, the now at the rear of the engine or in the middle to the rear you had the bypasses which I think this might be uh, which are little gates that open and allow air to it'll skip um, some of the engine actually skip the turbine section and possibly some of the later stage compressors um, this is what we call a ramjet and just right, flushes I think there. it has two on each two on each engine out right, before and aft right. if you look over Far left, where the switches are, um, by the throttles, you have got in the inlet aft bypass uh, dials there to use. Roger. Okay, I'm gonna have a look at that in a minute. Okay, so we think it might be something to do that. Now, if we go left again, it's what spice something. No idea what that is. Although it just says AFT. That's the spike mark spike. mark number. I think they call, they're calling the 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 nose cones the spikes. Ah. I think. Yeah, the spike would basically pull in as it got faster. Right. So uh, to slow the airflow down because the shock wave that would generate. Would blow the engine apart so it has to slow it down oh. so rather than using the flaps like the f14 and the su-27s have got mm. it had spikes and it would screw itself in and change its angle depending on the speed it mm. was the spikes were actually earlier than the flap designs weren't they the spikes were there in the mig 21 uh, yeah um i wonder what the number is i wonder if that's like how much your spike is out in millimeters or feet or uh, i don't know whatever inches <laughs> 25 right, look it just... says mark increase spike mark increase at, at yeah just spike out all right, okay, that's that. Okay, so it's just a monitor, it's ability to monitor. Oh, right, sorry, and I've just gone down. Oh, look, no, you've got the ability to change. Ones. You can actually change them yourself change your and, or put them in auto. Yeah, so you can see Mac 3.2, 3, 2.8. So you can actually change your spike position by... Presumably there was an override in case auto failed or something along those lines. Or maybe it was just a manual. Diagram or something. So you look up at your mark meter, which is like two instruments up, yeah. and then you can dial it in. How interesting. Okay. Forward. I guess in case the automatic system failed or something. Okay, so knows. those are spikes. Now we go to the back of the engine, or the middle and the back, and now we've got bypass. So we've got forward bypass closed. So we've got the ability to manually change the bypass here. Uh, if it's, again, you need to change it manually. And that's what we think is the ramjet bypass. Okay. God, imagine having to do all this. God, I'm glad we don't have what it is yesterday. That was, was that for cooling as well as, as, well as mm. power? I, I remember watching something about it i all i know is that all i remember is that she was it was it was it was to bypass the engine to get the amazing efficiency you just dump that compressed air straight into the burner into the afterburner and your fuel efficiency is just goes through the roof goes if you it. go to um public media i've put a diagram that explains about all the spikes and the trap doors and all stand by uh public media was that i actually want one of these in dcs what are you going to do with it, though? It doesn't have any guns. Uh, the map's not big enough. You'd be on the other yeah, side of the map. Yeah, you take off, you'd, no. you'd be in the other side of the yeah, map. Yeah, by the time you speed up, you take hundreds of miles to speed up. Have you ever seen one of these fly at an air show? Yeah, I have. No, very, no, very no, lucky, no. yeah. Yeah, very lucky to have seen that. Yeah, cause you, can see, you can see the bypasses here. I know it's a, that's it's a terrible video. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I opened it wrong. Right. I found a better one. It's all right. It's just being shit. Hang on. Mac 3.2. Mm, God, it's complex, isn't it? So look, you can open the... It go, they go through the cones, the actual cones have got in there. It looks very complicated, doesn't it? Mm, I mean, does. the whole system looks really complicated. No, they really knew what they were doing. Okay, guys, very yeah, good. How did they know this at 1950, um, whatever? But the thing is, you have to remember that things were progressing so quickly. They, the, the knowledge was actually pretty top-notch, but it was held back mainly by the, by the metals and the materials, wasn't it? I mean, it's amazing this, uh, this thing ever. Uh, I think this yeah. thing's like 85% or more titanium, mm, the whole aircraft. Yeah. It's got a lot of metal. The airframe is completely a titanium. So if we go down, we've got three dials. I can't read any of those dials. I don't think we're ever going to get pitch. Oh, they're trims. Look, pitch trim, tr something trim, roll trim. They're just trim, guys. They're yeah. trim dials, right? Left engine Too restart, left and right. And, and these engines did fail. Um, and because of the. Amazing! Uh, I remember one of the massive days. I mean, obviously this is a Widowmaker. A third of all of them just crashed and killed the pilot, or it crashed. And the engines, a bit like the F-14, but even worse because they were so spaced apart. When they failed, and they did, they um, they compressor stalled. I remember. If you lost an engine, you 
the thing would just go into a spin because of the massive your talk going on here. And so you remember you listen a bit like when we have the Vigan in DCS and it starts banging. You'd have to listen for it to start banging and making noises and then get ready for that engine to fail and then get ready for the restart and pull the power back or get the rudder on, whatever you've got to do um, to stop it going to a spin. And so you've got the... Re- you hmm? I was going to say, if you listen to the Fighter Pilot podcast, um, Brian Shaw episode he talks about one of the cones jammed on him and uh, you only have about i think he said a couple of seconds to react or else yeah that will happen. yeah roger i guess that's why you've got them right there so it's really easy to you know know where they are without having to look down and stuff like that okay cool all right guys so that's the front panel covered uh i'm quite impressed that we could guess most of that actually just um, to add on mm-hmm. to the visibility side of things if you actually look up at the, the canopy itself, yeah, you're right. The, the visibility horrendous. is horrendous. Non-existent. Imagine flying that thing, landing this thing must have been horrific. Like no the visibility. Far, when they were coming in the land, they had spotters for it no. because of how bad it was. Roger. Um, I've just seen a good one under drag shoot RSO bailout, so you can arm his ejection seat for him, right? Yeah, and there's a, uh, a light there for if he's ejected. I think. Vault. I <laughs> hope. Oh, I thought he said R80. RSO ejected. Jesus Christ. That's pretty hardcore. <laughs> right. Okay. Below just so you know he's fucked off and left yeah, it in. Right. That's interesting. It, 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 it's freaky. Don't like your like RSO. You can just eat him. You know how dangerous this thing to ply was how close that RSO ejected light is to the flight instruments. You know, you know, have how the chances that you're going to have to look at that light. So the chances were very high. Your guy was going to eject. But I remember the pilots survived and the RSOs died, didn't they? In, in in the actual, I mean, loads of these had to go down and inject, and the RSOs just died, didn't they? I think that's the one. Oh look, there's a there's a Delta. Oh, I always get the name wrong. There's a 104. No, not 104. A 100. No, not 100. A 106, 105 on the left. You guys seeing that? Look left. God, I'm not so bad. There's a really interesting video. I think this is the uh, Smithsonian. Must be. There's a interesting okay, video a, online of um, an RSO. Um, and pilot that talk about how they had um, an engine failure at Mach 3.5 and it literally tore the plane apart. Yep. Um, and the RSO managed to eject and he was killed. Um, mm-hmm. But the pilot was um, rendered unconscious and woke up in ah. his ejection seat because the violence of the accident actually <sighs> threw, him, threw him clear and he lived. The thing is, though, you've got to remember that if you're... You can't bail out at high speed. You can't bail out over Mach 1. You just die. Um, there's too mm-hmm. much air pressure. There's too much air flow up there. So he probably survived because... The, like injecting you know, into cement. Basically, <laughs> you yeah, it is. It. You know, it, the, it's, it's that video I did on fluid compressibility. Air becomes non-compressible, and it might as well be concrete is hitting him. Um, and this guy probably survived by the frame of the you know, in front of the plane protecting him. And then you know, res- uh, air resistance probably slowed it to subsonic, or you know, because it's not really. And then he bailed out lower down, or something along those lines. But, yeah, but, it was the violence of the crash that literally saved his life. Mm. Uh, look at RSO below that PSA. Something. Anyone know that? not obvious to me psa something don't know what that is that that's a thing okay what's all this shit on the left defog auto temp face heat temperatures cabin cabin environment control right so you could heat the cabin but you wouldn't pressurize it suit heat here so okay oh so this is pretty suit command so this was a pretty major thing then about all this stuff. Defog, is that defog the canopy or defog your helmet? I don't know. Uh, probably the canopy itself. Yeah, I don't know why I asked that actually. Uh, landing gear, uh, dry, wet, so anti skid conditions, uh, fuel something, fuel rearm. I don't understand that. Okay. Standard landing gear, pretty much standard landing gear thingy, stick, uh, cabin pressure. It's all you, most planes. You get all this kind of um, um, human stuff, like pressures and O2 and stuff on the right. Uh, it's all on the left here, um, and a pretty major console at the front here. I'm wondering why it's like that. Landing lights. Um, well, you're basically in space in this thing, so I guess that must have been. You kind of want to make thing. sure all that stuff works. Mm. <laughs> because the closer the closer the gauges to the front and center, the most important it is, isn't it? If you know what I mean. That's just standard design etiquette it got some yeah, i would imagine you could freeze pretty quick or mm, i guess so it must know, have been some, critical, something yeah. didn't work right we've got you know uh, the throttle levers here and on the left of that we've got some interesting um 
engine stuff, EGT, what is that all about? Exhaust cast temperatures and you can increase, decrease something. But I don't know what you can increase and decrease. Um, inlet aft bypass, I don't know, some manual controls for inlet uh, for bypasses. And like I showed on King, Kingston's drawing, this is probably temperature controls to turn to, to manage temperatures in the engine in case there's yeah. an issue. It's probably a fail safe of some kind. Go down to the left console, exterior lights. Um, what's that one there? Ox presumably oxygen there. I don't really know. They're not labeled these panels, which is a bit annoying. Uh, I've got a channel select, so that's a radio, and it's set to 344, so that's a UHF radio there. And below that, so that was primary, presumably. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, UHF, both. Uh, so you could do off, main, both, or ADF for uh, navigation. Squelch volume and mode, manual preset or cards. It's just a standard UHF radio that we'd seen at the time. Um, standby oxygen pressure, so I can't remember the environmental. There we go. Environmental was a massive thing on this plane. Usually you'd have it tucked away in your F-18 or something, but on this plane, it's front and center. Um, environmental controls. Uh, instrument lights there. Uh, cool. yeah, if you look below the standby oxygen press, that's a lot of instruments there just for a landing. Um, oh, yeah. Now, the, are these circuit breakers, do you think, guys? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're not controls. They're Control. circuit breakers. They look like breakers to me. Yeah, so these, yeah, so these are breakers. Uh, fuel, throttle, restart, circuit. I can't quite get that. This, that's actually quite it's, a simple uh, panel there. It's, because um, it's, you know. the fuel D-rich system, which lowers the EGT on a... Roger. You're over damping, over... So a lot of manual engine control, a lot of manual environmental control. Um, that's what this panel is about. Um, groin panel, but behind the stick, well, there's your indicator and warning lights. Something release. It can't be a parachute because that's up there. So I don't know what that re emergency what gear that re release maybe. Windshield anti ice is there. Mm -hmm. Windshield commands there. Everything is in a weird place compared to what the we gear used. Gear release is actually low side right. Yeah low right hand side of that yeah, so i don't know what that. that first one is i don't know what it is something else can release maybe a backup drag shoot something limit release mm. it's your surface limiter what does that mean uh t handle the spring load in the forwards it must be pulled mm, don't. i don't know uh so move on to right auxiliary panel we're supposed to be spending like two minutes on each plane but it's just interesting that's in the problem. It's an SR71. Yeah, we're just interested. So we've got fuel. Uh, presumably it's a selector gauge here, so you can you know select what tank you're looking at. I mean, this thing must be riddled with tanks, right? Um, and it's showing currently 2,400 overall, I guess. On the right, we've got something lic N, liquid nitrogen, litres. What would it use liquid nitrogen for? Two liquid nitrogen. Cooling. Liquid. Cooling. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Cooling of what, though? Engines? Systems? Oh, systems. Exterior? Electronic systems. I know some aeroplanes use, uh, have, well, a lot of aeroplanes have leading edge uh, cooling systems, um, like leading edge of wings and stuff like that. And annoyingly, I can't think of an example now. But this may have been one. Hey, Cap, you want to know what your surface limiter is? Yeah. So when you're above Mach 1 or Mach 2, your um, control surfaces are limited in their movement, so you don't lose control of the plane. So if that limiter um... system gets stuck, Yep. When you're at low speed, you can pull the handle and it will release the limits yeah. on your well, surface. Sorry, I only just saw the white writing because I'm stupid. Right, good, cool, I'll see. Um, something re that reminds me a bit of S16 has something like that. An override, doesn't it? Fly it's a bit different, but it has a fly-by-way override. Oh, wow. It has a pitch override, yeah. This, right. this must be a bitch to fly because it's a big hog. It, I know it is aerodynamic, but when it's when it's generally when things are built for aer high-speed aerodynamics, they're pretty shit at low speed, as you all know. Um, so I suspect this was a bitch to handle. Um, okay, guys, let's carry on because this is cool. Um, below the fuel gauge is CG, center of gravity in percent. Anyone? Percent. Maybe. Yep. Yeah, that's in the right place, isn't it? It's in the right place. Yeah. So you got. It's right next to the tanks. aft transfer. And below that, you've got fuel tank something. Pressure question mark. Uh, temperature. Um, I can't think what it could be. Uh, goes up to eight somethings. Okay, don't know something. Igniter purge. No idea what an igniter purge could be. Probably burns the fuel. Man, when you're when you're uh, dumping it. 
Man fuel apt tanks trans summit transfer after oh, yeah manual that's fuel your manual transfer. yeah your right. manual fuel after transfer because right. there's your all your lights for forward to back so being such a big ship center of gravity is going to be majorly important uh, right so we've got probably fresh pressure of the fuel tanks above that center of gravity and you could adjust that with manual transfer after transfer so you transfer backwards and ignite a purge it looks like it's transfer forwards uh, so you transfer backwards and forwards okay right got it aft transfer and we've got all these lights these strip lights here for transferring these must be the different tanks question mark um it looks about the right um, number hey cap Send. so the igniter purge mm -hmm. it, um it dumps your triethyl borane which is used for starting the main oh, oh okay is that a chemical igniter system chemical igniting system i wonder why it had that because it doesn't need quick start this this plane so there must be something to do with the nature of the engines that means you couldn't yeah, just had to hook it up to a like a v8 engine to spin it fast enough to start it right okay fine don't fully understand that but uh okay big uh knob on the right wall there on canopy seal pressure off i uh, don't know don't know what that means oh right so those are the different places you can have that switch on canopy seal pressure off okay uh, on it's on or off, right? <laughs> Stupid cap. Fuel emerge, so some emergency fuel, something like that. We've got some little things there. Oh, there's forward transfer. I see forward transfer now. It's just under the liquid nitrogen. Uh, emergency fuel dump. So, does anyone know where that's going to come out of? Is it somewhere in the rear? I guess. Or... Probably out the wings. I would. Admit. Yeah. I don't know where the fuel tanks were. I would have thought the the fuel tanks were central body on this but yeah, I don't down know. the center line um i mean that would make sense for the design but battery on and off weird place to have these this battery but uh, emergency ac bus yep we're used to them um something mm, in the norm i don't know uh it's gen generate left uh, right yes yeah, sorry inverter inverter oh, inverter. It's, it's, in, it's an inverter it's okay it's... left generator right generator you can have emergency off or norm we're used to that uh, bus, generate a bus. We have that on some of our planes. I still never really understood it. Uh, test switches. A uh, little turning knob. Fuel quantity in select. So that is the fuel tank that you want to show on the fuel gauge. So if you want to show, if you want to show total six of them. or six tank or five tank. I actually thought they would have more than six tanks, to be honest. But And then you see there's six of those strip lights. So, or well, seven, but... Near enough. Okay, guys. There's a button just on the right. Autopilot. Well, yeah. I mean, okay. Well, that's probably going to relate to what was below here. Um, so we've got... This looks like an autopilot. Yeah, this autopilot. Right. Massive autopilot thing here where we can choose all types of things. You pitch, you roll, you yaw. Uh, stability aug augmentation. So it's just a, you got your trimmers. So well, that's a big autopilot panel, isn't it? a big autopilot panel. I mean... In you know uh, more modern planes, this is all automated essentially. Um, as such, isn't it? You just got a button for on and off, uh, more or less. But okay, it's interesting. Uh, just something we've missed on the right there. Red. I can't read it. Pre-flight built-in test. A built-in test. Built-in test. Yeah, bit test. Yeah. Okay, guys. What Tacan? We all know about that. Uh, just a bit. Uh, so yeah, you got air-to-air -air tra uh, track receive, transmit receive there. Hang on, sorry. I got zero. You got off, receive, transfer, transmit, receive, air to air, receive, air to air, transmit, receive. Why would you have air to air, receive only? Oh, because you'd be operating over near the Soviet Union, wouldn't you? So maybe you wouldn't want to transmit for for picking up a tanker. Makes sense. Volume um, for your Morse identifier and just your, your thingy. Intercom uh, for you and the RS. No, this is. So the, here's your. We're used to these now. Here are the. Uh, volumes for all the different um, um, things, you know, intercom, uh, UHF, UHF-2, TACAN. There's two UHF radios. TACAN, VHF. Oh, there's a VHF radio. I've not seen that yet. Unless I'm being a nutter. I haven't, don't think I've seen that. Uh, and here's your intercom. Intercom, UHF. Oh, this is straight out of a bloody... Uh, you know, this is straight out of a A4 Skyhawk, I swear. Volume, master volume. Whether you want to listen to intercom, UHF something i can't read uhf2 presumably vhf or mute call button so that's you actually push that to talk um if you haven't um 
Um, that's not actually true, but it's like a backup call, I remember, I think it was, reading the A4 manual. There is, what's that near the wall there? Is that VHF radio? No, that's the NAV. The NAV radio. For what, though? Oh, ADF, that's... For your oh, ILS. Oh, ILS, right. ILS, VOR, DME. Well, or, sorry, um, it's not... Uh, we've, not got, we've got... We've got... ILS, VOR. Hang on, I've just got myself locked here. Right, um, right. Yeah, I get you, RC. Yep. Oh, yep. Yep. Sorry, I completely misread that. V O R I L S. Thank you. Um, that's that. Going next down panel down from the intercom, we've got. Yeah. What is this? It's kind of weird. Well, your cabin pressure on the. Yeah. In feet, ten thousand feet, twenty-six thousand feet. Even though it's not pressurized, cab I didn't think this is. I mean. You know, I haven't done any research on this. It's just stuff I remember. Maybe it's got two levels of pressurization or something. Maybe. Who knows? Mm. And then it's What's got IGV. IGV normal I'd imagine inlet, engine the... inlet guide vanes. In it, inlet guide vanes. Inlet engine guide vanes. What are they? Um, uh, it has no, no, left, right, left, right. Inlet lockout. guide. The guide vanes can be either in cambered position, which is normal, or cruise. It's just weird. They put it right in the middle of the. It is, isn't it? All the nav and they just hashed maybe this they thing just together, needed a they? place to put it. Roger. I don't know what they're for, but. Okay. Well, they're a thing. Okay, guys. Let's boot on. Um, anyone read? Is this VHF? I still haven't seen a note. That's just not enough digits. This is. That's low band. Uh, it is low band. Is it an FM? Yep. It's, it's FM. Must. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I see FM AM there. So this is. Your, it looks like an FM radio to me. It's currently set up at four zero, so that's FM. You got preset there. You got a mode there whether you want FM, AM, manual, uh, emergency, which is guard. Question. I don't really know what it is. I've never seen a radio like this. Uh, actually, no. This reminds me of the yes. FM radio in the A ten C. Yeah, it's just forty point oh. It's set at it's ah, the same. Kind yeah, of I got it right off. Transmit, receive, and direction finding. So this is a this is like a, a VHF FM radio by the looks of things, um, with um, navigation if required, which will go to your HSI. And then a bunch of circuit breakers, which are just circuit breakers, and that's it. It's not actually a very complicated cockpit, is it? That's I know it looks like rrr, millions of switches. I mean, there's nothing there that's particularly hard to. Personally, I think the RSO seat would be interesting. To see Wouldn't it be seat. interesting? Yeah, it doesn't look like we can. Um, because I don't even know what the RSO does. What does RSO stand for? Uh, rear seat Condensed rear. Systems Operator. Okay, guys. Right, let's back out. That was thoroughly interesting. Let's just back out. We won't, won't go through them all in detail, but just see what else is here uh, as I try and work out how I to get... I did see an A10 somewhere. Yeah, we'll go through a couple of ones quickly just that we know. Here's one. Here's a MiG-9. I'm almost certain this is going to be a MiG-19. Uh, so it's third row... Uh, second one along, standby. It is a no, it's a Phantom. Oh, wow, I don't know. No, scratch that. I don't know what that is. Well, the SR 71 uh, is Roger. You go down the next row, second picture on that row. There's an F 16. Oh, an F 16. Now we know this. Now, can anyone see what a, a is an F in any F 16? You know what? That doesn't look too dissimilar, though, does it? Let me just zoom in to the C. I was expecting them to. I mean, the UFC is the same. Oh, no, there's no um, DED. Look. So where would you, where is your digital display then? How weird. You've got the two DDIs or MFDs here. Your flight instruments are not identical. Oh, there's no HSI. HSI's gone. Oh, it's moved. It's just there. Okay. So it's lost a load of flight instruments. Interestingly, the it looks like you've got an IFI uh, below the left MFD. Do you see that shit? That looks more complex than the F-16C. Or well, maybe I've got that completely wrong. Just... Wait, where are you looking? So the left they... MFD, go down. That looks a bit like an eye for you, or... No, it's... Uh, I've completely got that wrong. So there's a clock. No, maybe I've got that wrong, yeah. What's down there? Actually, it does. The more you look at this, the more you realise how different it is to a C version. The uh, On the right, the engine commands are exactly the same. Engine dials. MFDs are the same, or what they show will probably be different. Um, it's got none of the eyebrow lights like the C has. It's got the app. It's got the alpha lights the same. It's got the uh, nozzle steering and uh, air, -to air refueling. Yeah, the left looks so different, doesn't it? Oh, it's got laser arm and master arm. They're the same. And alt release, they're the same. Yeah, they moved the 
PLFD to the right in the C. Imagine they moved the fuel control to the center. Emergency stores Jetson is the same. Oh, where is that? Oh, hang on, I'm caught up with you. Yeah, selective Jetson's there, which is... Oh, right, Selective Jetson you do through MFD, so it's got a Selective Jetson button there. It's got some probably warning lights there. Let's head down. What's that screen on the left? Is that the pilot kind of... What do you call the, it? Yeah, the PLFD. That's the PLFD that we still don't have in our pilot thing. Pilot light bulb display. Well, right, emergency stores Jetson. Horn silencer for the landing gear. Landing gear here on the seat there, presumably, yep. Uh, down lock release for the gear. Landing lights, uh, flaps. Uh, uh, I wonder if this had fully automatic flaps. Like, let's see. Parking brake, brakes. As far as Ground I can jets, see, it's all the same there. Yeah. We've got yeah, most. Uh... Got mode here for the HSI. We've got ILS Tacan, uh, Tacan Nav, whatever that means, and. ILS, that means INS, I guess, and ILS. Does anyone know if this was an EGI, i.e. a GPS INS or a pure INS? Because it's early. I bet this is pure INS. I bet we don't see EGI anywhere. Heading... Uh, it still has the same INS panel, so it's definitely INS. Remind me, remind me where the INS panel is? Right side, behind the oh, right side. Behind the seat. All right, I'll come to that in a bit. Right, guys. Um, right, so we've got a TACAN. Um, left side, just a basic tack-on. We've got the starter engine switches. They look similar, don't they, guys? Although the writing's slightly different. HOTAS looks the same. Uh, we've got here a radio of... I can't tell what it is, what type of radio it is. It looks like a UHF primary, question mark? Because you don't have the COM1 and COM2 at the top, do we? Or do we? Hang on. Yes, you do. Right, so it's COM1 and COM2, so that's UHF, VHF. And then... UHF uh, manual reversion here. Okay, right. You so know what, Cap? Yep. I wonder if that display above the jettison doors, emergency doors, is, is the DED. Stand by. That could be because the DED. You need a DED have, with that UFC, don't you? You need a DED. Yeah, with they it. do have DED switches, so I'll bet that's the DED. So that we think that's probably the DED. They've just moved it um, because it does make sense to have it at the top right there near the UFC. Uh, and then all I've done for those warning lights where the DED should be, they've just spaced them out on the eyebrows, haven't they? So, yeah. okay. They must have had complaints from pilots. Uh, so you've got UHF reversion there. You've got just your, uh, your channel volumes. Uh, yeah, it's UHF. Sorry, I've got there. Uh, you've got a HUD. Ah, now this is the exact panel of the HUD, but it's moved over to the left. It's on the right on the C. Do you remember? So all I've done is move this. Yep. That's that. Uh, you've got your trim, which is basically in the same place uh, as the C, or the C might be slightly further back. I can't remember. Uh, you've got the. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the IFF, the IFF switch. Here Rogers, the... we might come. We they might check out the IFF. Oh, well, you can see. You see, there's a blank spot. Maybe it was um, needed, or maybe they just weren't allowed they to keep it in there. Don't let those go. Yeah, to museums. it's fine. Uh, so video select there. We, we, obviously, that doesn't work in DCS, so we don't have to do that. We've got com uh, here, volumes. That's the same, but that's there in the C. We've got master. Uh, we've got the tanking here, look, which is the same. Um, we've got the master transfer switch. You've got the tank inerting, tank inerting. Uh, you've got the engine feed, whether you want to push the fuel forwards or backwards in the tanks, and the air to air, air refuel close. Yep, there's the air to air switch, right. Uh, testing, all this little Wagner stuff, all testing stuff we never really look at. Let's quickly have a quick look at the right. Flight instruments down there have changed. HSI positions changed. Speedos right down the bottom. However, it is a backup though, isn't it? So I guess they've moved things about a bit. Speedo should always be at the top of, of um, Speedo should always be at the top of flight instruments though. It should never be down there, I don't think. So I think they did. Well, well it's next to your there. AOA indicator and your altitude. So mm. it's important in a turn fight when you want to get excellent well, AOA. I mean, Mm. The AOA gauge down there is useless, JD. Um, um, the what they use in a turn fight, as I've discovered finally from the viewers, is that you actually use the um, the the landing indexer that kind of goes to a dogfight oh. mode. Yeah, I only just found this out from the viewers. I thought they were t pulling my leg. You, it turns into an air-to-air -air -air alpha indexer when you go into a dogfight, um, uh, and that's how you tell. So what is this down there for? The altitude. It's just backup. It's backup. It's backup. Oh. Everything down there is a backup to the HUD. Uh, in case you lose your HUD, and that's why it's down there. But you can't use that in a dogfight. You use the eyebrow. Uh, sorry, you use the eyebrow instruments. You use the indexer and the HUD. So that's something we've got to learn to use. We may have to do a video on that. Um, okay, guys. 
Uh, you've got your mag compass, you've got your fuel gauge, that's the same, although there's no fuel selector. Oh, there it is. There's the fuel selector, yeah. what that shows which tank. External fuel... Transfer. That's the transfer. That's transfer for the tanks, yeah. yeah. Uh, warning right. lights, um, which have been replaced by the PL thingy in the R1, question mark? No, those are still there. Still there are they? I don't think there's any... PLFD in this one. Roger. Um, so it's a new thing. You've got your HOTAS, which looks the same. Uh, is, is the HOTAS the same as out of the A10? Someone told me yes. that. Okay. Same stick. Right. Same guy designed it, more or less, didn't they? Uh, cabin. I've got environmental controls. We've got sensor weapons panel exactly the same. So this had the chin left and right look, um, and, which I didn't yep. realise. Uh, it has flight con fire control radar and the radar altitude exactly the same. Uh, we've got a communic VHF communicator here uh, with all your basic controls. There's your nuclear consent, guys. <laughs> nuclear consent. Mmm. Super good. Master Zero Wise, guys, in case you don't catch your sleeve on that, JD, whatever you do. Someone did that, you know. <laughs> someone someone did that. Um, a flight crew was polishing this and caught. And, and, no, a pilot. A pilot did it. Uh, he zero wise his own fucking plane. Idiot. What did mm. that do, sorry? Zero eyes. It basically deletes. Anything that could. Um, so if you crash land in Russia in this plane, uh, you have to press oh, zero eyes. Self destruct. It completely wipes, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, self destruct. So, but he pressed it by accident and just wiped his plane. It was like, okay, good job. That's the kind of thing I would do. So, what's missing on the right over there? On the right, where? It's uh, the it's cipher. Like a hole. The cipher. A cipher. Yeah. Ciphering. Ah. Where's the da data link? In case, in case a noob like me got in here with my little screwdriver and took it and put it on eBay, which I would do. Um, I mean, I would not do. Okay, guys, we've got um, light interior lighting. Um, interior lighting, we all know about exactly the same. Air conditioning, exactly the same. Ciphering, um, but we don't have, obviously. The one above for ciphering is a mixture of your aerial. No, sorry. What's the one above it? I forgot. I don't know what that is. We do have it, and it's an a... aerial refueling light. Oh, that's your oh. master light. I have master light switch. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Is that your lights? I was, I was wondering what that stick is right there, and that, that must be your elbow rest. Yeah, of course it is, JD. What do you think it is? <laughs> I was Jesus like, Christ. oh, that's an elbow rest. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like, what, does he hang on to that shit or something? What is that? <laughs> um, on the right, avionics power is exactly the same or similar to ours. Uh, the knob switched around slightly. Uh, we've got off, we've got stored heading, normal, INS alignment, uh, flight, in flight alignment, and I can't remember the other one, and attitude alignment. Um, all the the same ones. Uh, there's no mids. Things. There's no mids, right? No. Um, so mids came with the F16C, right? I guess. I don't know when that came in. Um, data, data link seems to be missing as well. Ah, yeah. Again, maybe. You know, one thing I noticed about this cockpit is there is a lot of room in on this instrument panel. The whole front end, it just looks like they had so yeah. much space. I mean, this must have been designed but, initially just to do basic. Dogfight. Remember the whole ethos really of the Falcon was take the shit away he doesn't need, whether that's big weight, whether that's an extra engine, whether that's take the shit away he doesn't need and give him what he does need, streamline everything. And he got fattened up a bit with the F sixteen C obviously, but I mean really look at the space between the gauges and the yeah. I and mean, it's just crazy. It's very you don't see this. Yeah. I'm gonna say I think the F sixteen C's cockpit is actually even more simplified. Really? Oh, I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't. Everything's like still tighter together. It's closer it, together. It, it's There's more stuff. Together, but with the F-16C, a lot of it is actually more in the HUD and in the uh, high helmet display. Well, because... yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? All right. Well, let me finish off. Uh, Anti-ice, you've got the upper and lower antenna, all automatic, and the environmental controls. You've got your reclined seat. Um, look up the canopy. Look at that shit up there. That's awesome. You see the environmental controls on this are way back on the right, mm. <laughs> tucked in. Yeah. Awesome. The SR-71, they're oh, on the look, front there's panel. a Black Widow on the left, or whatever it's called. The um, the cool one that the Raptor never became. What was it? Um, Actually, what's fascinating me is the plane right in front with that nose. What's that? I don't know. Look at the nose of it. It's, it's, oh, wow. It's like a laser beam. Lasers! Uh, okay, guys. Let's, let's uh, do another. Now we're, now we're booting through them quickly. Is that a YouTube? No, it's not. Uh, stand by. Um, Playing front. Guys. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, the one outside the window, it has a yeah. huge nose. Like, oh, yeah. It's weird. Crazy. Five minutes of playing, guys. Actually, Move the pilot the up there. one in the front looks like it's... Uh, that There's no, a it's A-10 for that now. In the front. A-10. Roger. Looking. I can't see I it, guys. Maybe the wrong F-16 pick then. 
I only see one. Wow, what the hell is this? Stand by. My god, would Cap hate this? CV-22 Osprey. I'm about to have a heart attack. There's a MiG-29. Wagner! It's all just DEDs. DIDs. DDIs. God, right. I'm wow, no way. I look at that it. shit. Unbelievable. It's a nightmare. Find one for me that we've got, guys, quickly. MiG-29, check it out. Where it's is like, it? Where do I go? It's... Uh, it's a few down. You see the Lancaster right there? Oh, that's not <laughs> like really it's cut a twenty four. Uh, it's says it's two so two it. down from the F sixteen and two to the Got right. It. Stand by. I sent you the link to the uh, oh A10 one. Stand by. I'm just found the MiG twenty nine here. MiG twenty nine um, doesn't say what. Oh Jesus! It's grubby and Russian, isn't it? Jesus! <laughs> Look at that screen. Mmm, good quality screen, guys. Oh, it seems so simple. I, to be honest, the first thing is it looks just like the FC3 plane. It looks identical, doesn't it? Everything looks the same as the FC3 plane to me. JG, send me uh, whatever this nose is. Now, we can't go through anything because we don't know Russia. I mean, we all know the flight instruments by now and whatnot, but it looks exactly... Does anyone disagree with that? I think it looks identical. Pixel it does. for pixel it, it, it for that flaming three. Oh, look, there's an A-10 on the left with a GAO-8. <laughs> oh. Ooh, beautiful. I mean, those 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 FC three planes. Bear in mind how many years old. They're pretty good. Um, pretty good model. Too. I know you can't press anything, but there you go. Look, it's got the old Russian style radio uh, se uh, selector there. Uh, Ooh, there's a B one bomber there. Where? Out the window to the left. There's a B one next to an F fifteen. Yeah. Wow. Look at that beautiful thing. Um. What is that? Literally. It's right a B one there. inside. What's that? Uh, can I What's that to the right of the MiG? Uh, it's something that's big, and that's all I can tell you. It's just big. It's, it looks like a C-141. Could be. Starlifter. Oh, Starlifter. God, that's been a while. Yeah, I haven't seen a Starlifter in a long When were they taking out of service? Oh, uh, it was late 80s. Ago. Wow, I do. Oh. I remember them. I remember the oh, C5 no. Galaxy and the one that, maybe the early nine. Maybe oh. early 90s. Must be 90s, because I saw no, still in that. There's probably... Yeah, you know, they may even... It's like 2008 or something. It was an awesome oh, plane. Because we had oh, them at the Air Force Base. The Osprey is sitting behind the A10 there, Cap. Oh, I don't. I hate the Osprey. It's this proper Wagner mobile. Have you seen the cockpit of that shit? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. JD, okay. 2006. So, JD. Oh, wow. That plane with the weird nose in front of the F 16. That's yeah, a yeah, what is it? total in flight simulator. Oh, cool. Look oh, at the tornado. Wow. So the pilots fly and then they have trainees in the front. Right. Or in the cockpit. Oh, uh, okay. Where is cool. the tornado? Um, uh, so MiG-29, then go over to the very left column, and then down a couple. Panavia Tornado. It actually looks sweet. It looks like I'm just the kind of right tech for me. It is. They are, they oh, wow. That's wonderful, nice. Wonderful in gameplay in that thing. Wicked. I'm um, just loving that shit. Simplified. Easy to read. God, those annoying max speed dometers that I hate, but so be it. Wow, it looks like it was put together by Germans. <laughs> yeah, funny that, isn't it? <laughs> look, at, look at how neat it is. Look, it's got an alpha meter oh, and a G been... meter where you can see them next to the fucking HUD. You haven't been in a the Italian German war word yet, have you, JD? <laughs> it's simple, guys. I like, I like simple. I think it's a hard job to make the cockpit simple for a pilot, and that's how it should be. It should be simple. So he's not... You know, getting confused. Just, uh, yeah, it's just all your basic normal stuff, guys. It's just laid out a little bit better, a little bit easier to read. It's bright as well. I hate these black cockpits where you can't see anything. Easy to read. Gauges are a little bit small for the engines, but they're not, you know. It's okay. Um, there's a HUD glass up there. I like the tornado. So I was always worried about it, but I like it now. I actually saw that on its uh, final fly pass. Recent. Oh, I missed it. I was gutted, but I've seen so many of them in my time. And it's not the end of the world. Yeah. I used to get 10 or 12 overhead every day. Oh, I've got, got an A10 here. Roger. Oh, the EF111 on the right of the... Um, uh, what the hell am I in? A tornado. How cool. How do I get back, guys? Right, where's the A10? I still haven't seen the A10. It's a uh, second column towards the bottom, just below halfway. Hmm. A Thunderbolt 2, correct? Should be, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I see it. That looks A10E to me. Stand by. Sweet, it's an F16. Yes. I was an F16 with only one D DID. What the f 
Fuck. That's an even earlier. Oh, it's got version. a screen down the bottom. You've seen that. Yeah, an even earlier version. Oh my god, it's not very nice. This is definitely an I see what you mean, Cap. That tornado is dead simple and yeah, easy it to is. find things. It's ergonomic. I want one. I want one. Wagner. Whoa, whoa. I still haven't found the A10, Japs. What's it's that? Just Stop posting it all over the forums. <laughs> F-15A? Personally, I'd like a British variant of the Harrier. Well, well, they can't do it. They wanted to. They were going to yeah. do the GR7. Oh, my God, the MiG-23. I can't even look at it. It gives me anxiety just yep. looking at it. Uh, <laughs> but it's very Russian. Very <laughs> Russian. It looks oh like God. an one, honestly. It's not, not much like different. Tw yeah, 21. Essentially, the direct link to the A-10. I'm looking at the F-15A, guys. It's very Wow, look at that F-15A. Yeah. yeah. Very FC3. Wow. That is just like we've got. And there's a... Oh, no wonder they wanted to simplify the cockpits. Yeah. That <laughs> Jesus, shit. that is a lot of buttons, guys. That is a lot oh. of buttons. There's a, a vampire. Wow. Wow, awesome. I like the F-15. That's I, I'm, I'm just fine. I'm, I'm back in the tornado. I'm finding myself falling in love with that cockpit. It's pretty yeah. so simple. Did you ever play the DID Tornado game? No, I never played it. That was 90s thing. It was, it's, you know, the graphics are crap now, obviously, but it's an F awesome game. mission planner. No and wonder the bloody Russians never had any sodding money and they spent it all on green fucking paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and buttons. <laughs> and buttons, lots and lots of buttons. I can't find anything I know anymore. Oh, that's a um, Phantom Wow. Oh, F5. Mm, one of my favourite. Oh, is that the HUD removed? Okay. Yeah, it's just like our model, boys. It's just like our model. It's identical. Well, not identical. A Lancaster would be cool, let's be honest. Oh, there's an F117 you know, in here. Yeah, most of it's missing. <laughs> most of like it's I, been taken apart. I feel yeah. like I get in this F5 and fly. I know every button engaged in this F5 because I've flown it so many times. Don't you feel like you can just get in it and fucking fly it? I'd be so sweet, man. God, I love this place. Where's this place I'm looking at? All these planes. It's awesome. Oh, look at the seat. If you view it, it's National Museum, U.S. Air Force. Um, I want to go there. So it must F5. be the National. <laughs> oh Air my Force God! Museum. Space shuttle. There's F5 a flight engineer a panel from a B thirty six, and actually, it's making my eyes hurt ah. looking at it. It's like I don't know how many dials are here. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. Six well, by saw, twelve panel of, of rotary oh. dials with extra dials. I saw this F five last year, Cap. Oh really? That one? It's in oh, Pearl man. Harbor. Yeah, it's in Hawaii. I found a really good one, Australia. guys, and this is a plane I really like. The F A the F eight Crusader. Do you know what I'm saying? F eight Crusader. Yeah, bought. It's a really good it's cockpit. Awesome. You'll really like it. It's right down the bottom. Uh what was it? Nineteen fifty five. And it just looks, there's no screens, there's no Wagners in here, it's just really good cockpit, I like it. I'm wondering if these if these guys sent a Vulcan bomber, because that would be interesting. Nothing, you won't get any bombers in DCS. Oh fuck, I just dropped it. There's oh, a, no, 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 uh, I'm wondering if he's done the interior cockpit of a oh, Vulcan right. bomber. Have to have there's, one, there's, a, there's an HE-111 from, like, from uh, for the one year time. Yeah. If you want a simple cockpit, have a look at the ME-262. Well, if I ever get there, stand by. Oh, actually, another big um, twenty-nine. If you want a really simple cockpit, the Kitty Hawk. It's a good one. <laughs> and the Davlin Vampire is interesting. <laughs> yeah. He said Corsair is a bit of. It's had bits added to it, I think. Though. Crusader F seven F Tiger Cat. That's interesting. With his Garmin oh. sat nav in the middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, as, as used in Korea, yeah. F-89 Scorpion. Something's come up, guys. I've got the bug out. I'll see you all soon. Oh, I'll see you again. Is that against it? The F-9F. Has anyone ever seen an F-89 Scorpion? No. I don't remember no. what it looks like. Where's this big it's 23 Northrop. that you guys keep talking about? I have this in the big 23 yet. You can't miss it. It's so green, it'll stand out in your face, Cap. Mm-hmm. Well, there are a few of those. Oh, yeah, but this one's like greeny blue. It, it makes your eyes bleed. Ooh. Ooh, she's a big one. That's very MiG-21. That's very MiG-21, isn't it, boys? 
that's the same, that's the Extremely. same, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same. It is a bit bright. I do like their green. I, I, it makes my eyes bleed. That is very MiG-29, uh, 21, cool. Visibility, how do they make the visibility so shit out of these early MiGs? Drives me nuts. Wow. Wow, that's that nice line 51. down the middle of the cockpit. Roof. Yeah, they yeah. do like their <laughs> lines. Canopy. They like their lines, don't they? <laughs> so you can't see a damn thing. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I, I think you get more visibility out of an SR-71. Mm. F-15 right next to it. They have a mm. zero. Wow. You know, it just looks so MiG-21. I know it's kind of an nah, obvious thing to say. I can't look at that MiG-23. It's... it's just a MiG-21. Do you drive the MiG-21 in DCS? Uh, I, I can't look at that either. Oh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I own it. Yeah, yeah. I after after a while, you just I... learn to fix my heart. Works. Actually, Cap, the, if you, a couple of pictures down. All those that, dials, right next. Hey? If you, a couple of photos oh, oh, down oh. from that MiG yeah. is the F-15. Oh, it's actually the next photo. It's the F-15 that's sitting right Down by Oh yeah, we saw that F fifteen A. Yeah, it's just the same as the F fifteen C in DCS, like almost dial for dial. It's sweet, it's sweet as nuts. You'll see that Meg. Oh really? Uh, I understand by. Oh, there it is, Flogger, Flogger. Beautiful guys. Oh, and a Mig twenty one behind it. Look, a BIS behind a uh, Mig twenty one behind it, behind that twenty seven. Yeah. So cool. There's a fifteen just behind that, or a night, or something like a fifteen. So sweet. Oh, you wow. just see the tail of it. Can we have a GoFundMe to go fund Cap to go to this place to sit <laughs> in these cockpits? I would like that. I'll die happy when I sit in these cockpits, guys. Oh, it's so cool. Like, oh my god, it's so cool. Amazing. What an amazing website. Isn't it good that people do this shit all for free? Yeah. Okay, guys, you guys That's carry on. I'm going to have to can it there because I'm going to get in trouble with Alison. What I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go for lunch. Um, and Oh, there's the A-10. Finally, I found it. <laughs> now, that's an A-10C, guys. That's an A-10C, isn't it? Yes. That's literally it's just yep. button for button. That's what we've got in DCS. And I've never been a fan of the A-10C. Well, it's, no, actually, I do like it. It's just... I just, it's just one of the ones I never learned. It's just at the wrong time for me before I was reading manuals properly and stuff like that. Um, and so I never really learned it properly. Yeah, it's got the same HOTAS as the, well, the same stick at least as the um, F-16. Okay, guys. Just missing the uh, countermeasure panel. Mm. Very good. Great day. Right. So come visit this website. Sorry to drag on and on as we like to, but that's what we do. Thank you to the guys who set the Facebook site up. Come and have some fun. Um, learn your, come and learn your gauges and stuff. And, um, and whatnot. Um, after we come back, guys, we'll do our tunnel run. And then that's this week signed off before I go on my little holiday.